Hey everyone, and welcome to episode number six of The Closet Diaries. If you are new to my channel, I have a series here that I call The Closet Diaries, where I am slowly making my way around my house, redoing all of my closets to be more functional, efficient, and organized. So this episode is going to be my guest bedroom closet. So before I started the DIY makeover, here is what this closet looked like. There's some new drywall installed because we had this closet scaled down in size to what it previously was to make room for a double vanity in the bathroom on the other side of the wall. So as you can see, there is no shelving or anything installed in here currently. So not only was I making over the closet, but I was painting and redoing the guest bedroom as well. So that is going to be a separate video. So I started this project by giving all of my trim work a nice fresh coat of paint. And then the next day after all the trim work had dried, I taped everything off to paint the walls in the guest bedroom and the interior of the closet. I like to use tape because it gives you really crisp, clean edges. So then I started painting the closet. Normally I would probably do a bright white for the interior of the closet, but I really wanted to use paint that I had on hand rather than going out and buying new paint. So the color I have in here is a very light, light grayish color. And here's what the closet looks like after all of that drywall was painted. Then it was time to start installing the closet system. Just like all my other closets, I've chosen to utilize the Ikea Elgat system. You can install this closet without using these horizontal brackets here, but I think it makes it way, way easier. I have two here, and as you can see, they are too long for this closet. And so my neighbor graciously helped me out there and used a hacksaw to cut one of these metal brackets down. So then I eyeballed and made a mark of where I want to install the horizontal brackets. And as per usual, I am using drywall anchors in every single hole I drill. So there is now the horizontal brackets installed, ready to go. So now I'm able to just slide on these vertical support brackets. And before I drill any of those into the wall, I like to make sure everything is the proper distance apart by installing a set of shelves on the top and a set of shelves on the bottom. Again, just to make sure everything is properly spaced before I mark my holes. Once all of that is just kind of settled in, I will use my level to shift anything about to make sure it's as straight and lined up as possible. Then I go ahead with my pencil and make all my mark for the drill holes. And then I pull everything out and start drilling. I didn't run into any studs in this closet, so again, I made sure I used a drywall anchor for every single hole. And then I placed the vertical brackets back in and started screwing them into place. After all the support brackets were put into place, I used my vacuum to clean the inside of the closet really, really well and pick up all of that dust. And then I started placing all the brackets and shelving inside. I like this system because it's pretty user friendly, it's very customizable and very budget friendly. I probably spent maybe 60 to $75 on the pieces just for this closet. So the IKEA website has an LGOT planner tool that you can use to plan exactly what pieces you need to get and how you wanna place them. One of the things that I kind of screwed up and didn't take fully into consideration is space for these drawers to move in and out. They ever so slightly bump into the baseboards around the closet, which is unfortunate. If I would have shifted the entire fixture over just to the left a few inches, I could have avoided this, but there was nothing I could really do at this point and it was still functional. But that's just a side note for you to make sure you take that into consideration. So like I said, since this is my guest bedroom, I don't have a lot of stuff to put in here, but I did want to make sure it was set up like a standard bedroom closet for resale purposes in the future. And here's what the closet looks like all installed. It is a small closet, but I think it is very functional. And there is some extra room to add some more shelving at the top if I wanted to later on. 
And then the next thing I needed to do was work on the closet door itself. So this closet door was just kind of build a grade with primer on it only as you would buy it. So I am painting it with the same paint that I use for all my trim work and baseboards. So I gave this closet door two coats of the bright white paint to match all the trim work. So I'm basically just putting some different odds and ends in here that would be useful for when people come and stay with us. My boyfriend and I both live very far from our families. We tend to have people who stay for longer periods of time. And up top, I am putting my air mattress as well as a few extra pillows. And then in the drawer, I'm putting an extra box of tissues as well as a little jar of some lotions and a pillow mist. And that's everything I am putting in here for now. Like I said, it is not very exciting compared to some of my other closets. Here's kind of a closer look of what I was talking about with the drawer. And that's everything for my guest bedroom closet. Very happy with how everything turned out. If you want to see how I made over the rest of this guest bedroom, I'll have that video linked below in the description box. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or inspiring. And make sure you check out the rest of my Closet diary series for even more inspiration and motivation. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.